Welcome back, everybody, to the Homonymous Podcast. My name is Alex Neal. My name is Ethan Weldon. And today, boy, this is episode 25, 25. first and foremost, but today we have a very special guest, Ethan. Take Michael. it away. Michael. How's it going, Michael? I'm very well. How are you doing? We're doing good. Good to have you on. We hey. appreciate it. But uh, Michael is one of our neighbors, actually. He lives two doors down from both of us, I believe. Yeah. Cable 911. Right in between us. So, yeah, we're excited to have you on. We're going to talk about a couple of different things with Michael. Michael actually basically runs this entire dorm hall, like, by himself. He does the entire (laughs) thing. He's that crazy? I know. That's crazy. That's why you don't make him mad, because he'll literally kick you out of your room. Like, it... I wish. That's why some of the people are missing on this floor. <laughs> they made Michael mad. Structure. Just like, you That's go. what we need. That's why there's <laughs> such a big Structure. Turnover. Harsh yeah. leadership. <laughs> Structure. People stealing stuff out of the dryer. Yeah. Holy yeah. fuck, I heard about that. People, yes. like, throwing food all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what do you think about that? Because that, um, that was the topic of discussion for us whenever we saw that happening. Because that was like... Mm. We, yeah. all, we all know. We all know. That's mm-hmm. like... Yeah, well, <laughs> that's kind of like a niche thing to us. It's like a floor nine thing. Like, if you saw that, you know. Yeah. You just know. You yeah. just know. I mean, that's that's the deal. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but, you know. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about that specifically because I knew, I remember hearing about you getting that position. And that you said now you have, like, four other things that you do? So, when I started Hall Gov, yeah, I ran as a senator, like a local senator. Okay. Um, and I went to like all the RHA meetings just to like vote, and it was like <laughs> low key and fun. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Go ahead. Now, uh, I ran in another election to be like the Speaker of the Senate, which is like the first among equals. Like, I it was an executive board position, um, but like, not really. Okay. I just showed up to the meetings and, like, relayed all that information back to the Senate. Really low-key, really simple. Okay. That semester happened. We lost a lot of fucking people because right. everybody moved out. Mm, because of yeah. COVID, it's expensive. Yes. So I yeah. took on um, a committee role, another committee role. At, another. At the local level, so at ABLE level. So I was a uh, executive committee, local committee. Speaker of the Senate, Senator, and then eventually Treasurer, Interim Treasurer. Um, Oh, my God. So, yep, I took on all five roles, and now we're actually losing another person. (laughs) See, that's what I'm saying, right? You do run this whole thing. So, I I told... Six million dollar man over here. I've told people before, like, if I quit Hall Government... It's game over. <laughs> like, the, the, the Residence Hall Association will not recover. Your dorm will be running to the ground. <laughs> yeah, you're the life force of this. So what does the job of senator, because that was the one you were initially running initially, for. Initially, yep. What does that entail exactly? Yeah, so basically you show up to the weekly meetings and you vote on legislation. Mm, okay. Um, and that legislation usually is a, like events, local events we do around campus. But there are some other oh. things here and there. So that, that was probably unique this semester or last semester specifically given right. the COVID stuff. Like what, what events were there? Because there was probably like a handful, There were a right? couple. Yeah. Uh, most of them were virtual and had v- like no people show up, which That's, is fine. Yeah. Uh, but we did run a very successful movie night at the beginning of the semester. Yeah. Like, I remember that. There was a lot of people there. A lot there. Yeah. of people there. Yeah. And I, that was before my time, but I did a very good job. Was that in, uh, where was that? That was on the green space in front of Cather. Yep. Oh, oh no! I remember hearing about that. I was gonna go to that, but I don't remember why I didn't. And I was like, "Dang, I wanted to actually go to that." It was really fun. I think I left for Texas or something like mm. that that day. But I was playing like sand volleyball for like three <laughs> hours that evening. Yeah, <laughs> nice. but that was I just like lost track of time. Because that's cool though. Because that's you can do it outside. Everyone can be. You know, there's that space Socially so that distance. people can be apart. Yeah. So, because that must be extremely difficult to plan events right now. Really like, difficult. what? Yep. How do you justify that to someone in a leadership position when it could be their ass gets, in, you know, like getting in trouble if something were to happen? Yeah, there are a lot of forms we have to sign to get anything. I approved. bet. Oh my Jeez. god. Like, okay, this is seem. It may seem like super simple, but like, what is the process of getting something legally up on a bulletin board? Yeah. It's like I've seen so many things like take down by 30 days after this date and so on and so forth. It really depends on where the bulletin board is. Interesting. Um, most, it changes well, based on that? Most of the time it will, like you have to get it approved um, from the university. Like some higher up has to approve it all. 
Um, and then it goes down to, the, like, I think, the hall level, and then you, the residence director has to approve of it. Right. And then as soon as they give their approval, uh, they get posted. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, it seems a lot more complicated than it should be for a bulletin board. <laughs> You're right. You just yeah. stick something on there. But, like, they have virtual ones, though, too, that they, they're they all around campus. Virtual signage. That one takes, I think, two weeks to get approval for. Two weeks. It that takes gum. a lot of time to get approval here. I think I saw some of the pictures that I took for student affairs on one of those ones. Nice. I was like, oh, shit. Good. <laughs> like, I didn't even, like, I was getting dinner once, and I look up, and I'm just like, I took that picture. <laughs> I'm like, what? I didn't even know that was happening. But, yeah, yeah so as you've – I mean, this has obviously been – I think it goes without saying very difficult for you to absorb these many roles. What was probably the most challenging one to absorb? Um, believe it or not, things got easier when I took on uh, the treasurer position. Really? Because then my main duty was no longer the chair of these two committees and speaker of Senate. My position now was really, well, you're treasurer because that's the most important duty. Oh, so they like, they like, like shuffled you over to that like okay focus on that instead right so like yes i do still serve as speaker and that's still my official position along with the committee boards but really my main duty right now is is to serve as treasurer mm. okay until we can get someone new and that that's just like managing the funds that go towards these sixty six thousand dollars okay <laughs> that's how much money i manage um, nice and we have it all broken down and we have a very large Google Sheets spreadsheet. Nice. Um, That's the future of business. Really, yes. Google, Google Sheets, sheets. <laughs> Google in Excel. Sheets. Yes. Uh, so it's very large and it has many tabs, which yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> you could, I didn't know you could tab in a Google Sheet. Really? Until like I saw, like no. Within it, not yeah, even like the Chrome extension. Had like no itself? idea. That's funny. <laughs> you know what I remember when that, like, when the elections were first happening, I remember this one guy going around and asking for votes from like literally everyone. Was it Tig? I don't remember. Probably he became. Was it the guy that put his uh, yeah, Tig for Prez outside on the windows? That was yeah. Yep, that's Tig. He is the president of Abel Hall. Okay, so that's specific to this. Right, specific to Abel Hall. Okay. Yep. So I, I technically hold four executive positions for RHA as a whole, mm. and then one committee position for Abel. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that a lot because of you know, pressing. Yeah. Whatever. So now. Mm -hmm. Are you living on campus next semester? Yeah, actually, I am an RA over at Village. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Where is Village? Village is uh, over by HSS. Where's HSS? Harper, <laughs> Shram, and Smith. Oh, the oh. The very oh. north end of campus. Okay. So, like, okay. yeah, sure, the location isn't the best, but also I don't have to pay. Right. So no, I'm I was not thinking about being an RA. I was thinking about doing that because I was just like, that's a huge chunk. That's like... Yeah, that's a big chunk of it's money. It's like nine grand off yeah. of here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're on campus and stuff, so it's just like. And here we are. We're a bunch of chumps trying to find an apartment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> paying like, oh my God, went too much a month. But I bet. Yeah. So another thing that, I mean, you're involved in politics within the school, but that's not something, it's not restricted to that. No, I love politics. Yeah. So Global politics. Yeah. What are What are some things that you've been seeing recently that have struck you or. Well, stood out to you. Yeah, I think I, well, one thing that's consuming my mind right now uh, is something interesting I noticed, um, and I wonder if it's going to be a regular thing. Yeah. Um, now that more people are being vaccinated and yeah. COVID cases are gradually going down, and I, this is just from an outsider perspective, I don't have any data, but it looks like mass shootings are increasing. Oh. I did see there was a... There uh, was just one in Boulder. In Boulder, yeah. Yep. There I have was. family that lives in Golden, that, like right outside of that. And wasn't there, there was a shooting that killed like eight Asian Americans? Mm -hmm. It was in Atlanta. Atlanta. Is Atlanta. that what that was? Okay, I yeah. was wondering if that was the same one. That's interesting. That's an interesting correlation. And again, I don't have the data, but it's an inter interesting observation. I've right. Noticed. I mean, that's what it is, is people gathering in a single area. Like, that. that's exactly where that kind of stuff takes right. place. And there's been a significant less amount of that. So yep. I wonder if there's an actual... I wonder if we could look that up or something. That'll be like interesting to see I mean, the data. I'm guessing is what it is, is that because more people are getting vaccinated, people are feeling a lot safer about going outside. Right. Stuff like that, they're feeling as if, okay, I can go outside. Therefore, those people that want to hurt other people are taking that opportunity to be yeah. like, okay, here's a great opportunity for people that aren't suspecting it. Their past year and a half has already been as bad as it can be. <sighs> Jeez, dude. And no, then I really, I'm sorry. double whammy. 
I really hope that this doesn't like isolate people from getting the vaccine. Oh, like I hope I people don't look at like, ooh, what if something happens because I'm vaccinated? Like, like what a, an awful idea. That's like a rock in a hard place. Right. That's terrible. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's like the probably the percentage chance of that happening is so low, but yeah. I like I used to really not think about that stuff, but I did catch myself a couple of times. Like I was out studying in front of the union and I don't know why, but I just had a thought like what if someone came up behind me with a gun right now? And I, that was the first time I'd had a thought like that where I'm like, oh, well, like, I, oh, so I no, just thought that. I was I was in really big into theater and speech in high school. Yeah. And my sophomore year, we re, uh, back in Minnesota, uh, we do competitive one acts through the state. Yeah. Um, and the one act we did that year was called 26 Pebbles. And it was um, Eric Uloa, who wrote the play, went out to um, Newtown, Connecticut, and interviewed community members after the Sandy Hook shooting. Oh. Wow. So we did a one act of that, and we did very, we took it to the state level, we did very well. Um, and after, uh, after that, ever since sophomore year, and uh, that was the same time the Parkland shooting happened. Mm-hmm. So I became very aware yeah, of that oh, kind of wow. stuff. That That's kind of stuff. You know, where it's not necessarily started. a fun fact, but an interesting fact Nathan at the end of the hall yeah. is from Sandy Hook. Really? What? Like he went to the other elementary school in their district. Like down, like down there. Yeah, that one. The one wow. that was playing the music that everybody got <laughs> yeah, mad at. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was from that town. I did not like know that. went wow. to that elementary school. Yeah, the cool thing about doing that show is that all the characters were real. So yeah. like, yeah. I reached out to Rabbi Shal Prover, who I played, and like Facebook messaged him. I, oh yes, and I'm pretty sure we're friends on Facebook. That's a that's a next level of like which like as an actor like you that's could crazy that, that, with the chances. Yeah, you don't get an opportunity like that to be able to contact someone and actually talk to them, or right? Get to communicate about that kind of mm. thing. That's crazy. It's really cool. Yeah, I don't know, but there was something else I was going to mention about that, but I can't remember. But it was something around the realm of I don't remember what it was, but. Yeah, I think it involved the school shooting kind of thing in regards to this, but yeah. I'm well, I mean, I know there's been a few college campus attacks. I know the big one was Virginia Tech oh, yeah. a few years ago. That was Was that horrible. the guy with the, he was like sniping people or was that? No, that's an older one. That's That was Vegas. One. Vegas. That was the country concert. Yeah. Or no, no, no. I'm thinking of a different one. I'm thinking of one that I saw like footage. It was like VHS footage mm. of it or something. Oh, I mean, was it like Columbine? No, it was it was at a college. I remember because they were like it was like college kids running around. But uh, I think yeah, there was like a, gotcha. a guy who like went up in one of the buildings mm. and like yeah, it was like sniping people. This horrible. is horrible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I think I remember uh, what I was gonna ask you. But it was basically <laughs> like things. What are I mean that kind of that's gotta be a big burden to carry when you're constantly in the loop about political things that are happening because I feel like I definitely take a stance of like the ignorance of it because I just, it's a lot to, if you know about everything that's going on in a global area, you know, it's like, it can be overwhelming. Did, like, would you say that's accurate? Um, I think being involved in politics uh, and, and uh, informed has been one of the most gratifying processes, but also one of the most draining. Right. It is incredibly draining and difficult to see every single major tragedy played out right. live because of social media, yeah, especially a different kind of access to it. So it, I uh, you know obviously I'm very interested in it. Um, it's difficult. Yeah, I remember seeing one one example that I vividly remember was the. Uh, do you guys remember that the it was like a firework like a factory or something that exploded in like Yemen, I believe. It was it was a chemical or, yeah. uh, warehouse in, in Lebanon. In Lebanon and Beirut. Lebanon. And that yeah, that I remember seeing footage from like you know, 30 different angles just from like regular people and I was like just the shockwave was Yes, like oh my god, I that took, was insane. I took about a 2 month break from news after that. Did you actually? That was really really difficult. Was, yeah. I it was yeah. really it was kind of it not necessarily interesting but like it was kind of weird because the town i'm from is lebanon tennessee and i had people messaging me like where is this where did this happen in lebanon i'm like no 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 no. the country oh so (laughs) they were asking you like if it was in your home where the frick did this blow up in lebanon tennessee and i'm like no (laughs) i would be dead right now (laughs) yes oh my god i remember seeing i saw this one video it was they were filming 
It was a videographer filming um, a wedding. A wedding. Yep. And they were just like doing their thing, like having a wedding. Next thing yep. you know, I was like, oh my God, that is scary. But speaking of um, kind of like video and film, uh, that just reminded me of what you had up in there. Or do you, do you want to show that video real quick? Yeah, how do you spell Beirut? <laughs> B E I R U T. Boom. Beirut wedding video. Yeah, this was absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. Do you want to play the NBC one or do you just want to do play? BBC? Yeah. <laughs> no copyright, please. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing this and I was like, it just seemed like such an ordinary moment right. that was just completely like sideswiped. <laughs> I was I was wondering what happened. Uh, am I going to die? How am how I'm going to die? I was so happy like all the other girls. Uh, I'm getting married. Um, uh, my parents are gonna be happy seeing me in a white dress. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'll be looking like a princess and everything. I feel so sad about what happened to other people, uh, about what happened to Lebanon. When I when I woke up and I saw the damage that happened to Beirut. The one thing I said was, Alhamdulillah, we're still alive. Yeah. I Like, uh, it's so crazy. Like, you see that, the video before, and, like, you see all the, the house, mm -hmm. you know, the, the area and everything, and then, like, seconds after, it looks like a completely different place just yeah. from the, the blast. Yeah, I'm like, just happy that it wasn't, like, a terrorist attack. Yeah. It was... It was Just, like, an accident, right? Chemical yeah, reaction. Yeah, there's there from, a lot of... It was stored fertilizer, wasn't it? Something like that. I know uh, Lebanon as a country uh, has a lot of, you know, corruption issues. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of it was, like, mismanagement. Right, like, well, we'll we'll take care of that later. Right. Like, we'll take care of it later, later, later. And then later we came. Right. Back. Explosion. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So, Michael, mm -hmm. um, I just, just thought of this. So, you're from, what part of Minnesota are you from? Uh, St. Paul. St. Paul. Okay. And like, where is that in relation to, like, Minneapolis or something uh, like that? It is literally a right 10, 15-minute drive uh, east. Wow. Okay. They're yeah. usually, they're, it's like Minneapolis, St. Paul. The Twin is Cities. Like the gotcha. And, and this, then, yeah. What town were you from? St. Michael. St. Michael. St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael Upperville. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know the, the, you know the uh, outlet mall? Yeah. Yeah. I used to live literally, like. Like walking distance from this. Nice. That's funny. Yeah. And then I came back to the Midwest. <laughs> well, <here laughs> I had to are. return to my roots. <laughs> That's what I see it as. But Dang. so okay, so I went to Minneapolis a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Like, what is what's your favorite thing to do in Minnesota? Ooh. Oh gosh, in Minnesota. Thank you for not saying Minneapolis because I don't like going to Minneapolis if I can't oh, help right. it. I'm a St. Paul person through and through. <laughs> um, not because I don't like the big city of Minneapolis, mm. but St. Paul is like it's more homey to me. Anyway, right, naturally. You know, uh, growing up, I was um, not necessarily had the most amount of uh, money, but we had a cabin that ran in the family from like three generations. Mm. Cabins are nice. Um, so going up to the cabin, and that's actually alive, is that cabin was in Wisconsin. But like... Close, close enough. Close enough. Yeah. In Minnesota, obviously, going to the Mall of America is fun. <laughs> uh, I went for the first time. I, that was insane. I also yeah. go like three or four <laughs> times a year. Dude. So. <laughs> My mom... Her sister, like, used to date this guy who was a radio show host, and he would get us free tickets to that ride area oh, in yeah. the center. Like, yeah, a, a whole amusement park amusement inside park of the in mall. The yes. The he IMAX movie theater on the fourth floor. Yep, yeah. that, was, that one hit. Dude, he would get us, like, like a stack of, like, wristbands, the like, wristbands. this big, and just be like, take it. Yep. And we would just That's go, like... crazy. Yeah. Whenever um, we'd, we'd be bored, we'd be like, you want to go to the Mall of America? Yeah. <laughs> no, we we go do. walk around the mall and oh, go yeah. on the rides. It was kind of weird, like... Because I went in peak of COVID season. Yeah. Like Minnesota's oh. not great. There was, it was so freaking busy. Mm -hmm. Really? Like, I almost got uncomfortable. I mean, I was fine. I had my mask and everything, but like yeah. that, it was. You're like, this is a ridiculous it was amount a of people. Ridiculous <laughs> amount of people. And there. malls are already kind of like dirty, you know, and just like, they're malls. Yeah. So that, that context yeah. with you, you're like, but hey, uh, I went to the print store and got myself mm, a Prince album. Nice. So I was happy. 
Oh, Give there was me. a Prince store? A Prince store. Oh, naturally, because he was, yeah, yeah, <laughs> From Minnesota. that makes sense. Because it was, uh, what's the name of his place called again? Do you remember? I feel like such a bad Minnesotan for not wow. remembering. Paisley wow. Park. Yes, Paisley it was Park. a Paisley Park store, I believe. Oh, do you have it right now? Yes. Purple Rain. <laughs> no, I didn't get Purple Rain, because I already have Purple Rain. I got Sign of the that's Times. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember I was, yep. I was uh, but dude, working the camera for like a, a football game back where I used to live in this giant stadium and it was raining and they were playing purple rain and Love it was that. everyone just singing along. And I was like, wow, yeah, look, yeah. look at this. This is a moment. That's kind of cool. I like oh, that. That's design. really cool. Peach colored. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> from Minnesota, everybody sings purple rain whenever it rains. Yes. So. You have to. It's courtesy. Yeah. Kind of, you know, after 18 years. Oh, of I would imagine you get super purple rain. sick. <laughs> yeah. It's your, you're like, yeah, does it have to be a does courtesy it, though? Again? Yeah. <laughs> But no, it was, I mean, I'm just asking because Minnesota, I only ever went to Minneapolis. This was the first yeah. time I've ever been to yeah. so- Minnesota since I was like a really young kid when my grandparents had a cabin up in the northern part of Minnesota. And I was like, okay, here's what I want to do. So we went down and saw First Avenue. That blew my yeah. mind. That was so freaking First cool. First Avenue was really cool. Oh my gosh. I was just so mad that nobody was playing there. I was yeah. like, I literally might have a seizure right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> like. It was so yeah. cool, and it, the really cool thing was they had a they had their own star on the thing for George Floyd, and oh, a whole really? different color. It was a red star, and I thought that was really really cool. Dang, yeah, that was cool. So much has changed in Minnesota since I've been there. Yeah, oh there's God. a whole like new stadium now. Yes, yeah, oh. bank. It's a nice stadium, isn't it? I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it was expensive. It was very it was expensive. So expensive. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you might have a different take on this than we do. I what? think it's. I think it's just really ugly. You. Uh, I it's haven't really seen pretty it. on the inside. It's, oh, I know it is. I I went. I actually went to the X Games there once. Oh really? Ooh. Yeah, it was a couple years ago. That sounds kind of cool. It was really actually. cool. Um, I think it's so ugly though. Yeah, it does that. not very pretty. <laughs> it's basically like a really pointy. Rectangle. It, really? They say it's supposed to look like an old Viking ship, but mm. I the know. Viking ship is on the inside, like the bowl of the stadium is, is like that oh. it? I think so. That makes mm. sense. But like some of the new stadiums they have coming out now, like I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of Mercedes Benz Stadium in yes. Atlanta. It's insane. Mm. Holy moly, mm. dude! That is absolutely. It's a beautiful stadium, and like I don't, it's a big giant building, but it's still really really cool. And the uh, LoFi Stadium. Do you see the new one in LA? That they were building for years and years and years. Oh, I gotta pull up a picture. I know in what was it, uh, Cutter, when they were going to be hosting like maybe FIFA or something. Yeah. They there were like pictures of them building these massive stadiums, like nothing had ever been built like that in Cutter before. Dang, that's crazy. Oh wow, oh, that so is. This really is cool. the outside. This is mid construction. Mm-hmm. This is what the imbre- this is what it looks like on the render on the inside. Mm-hmm. They built the, a custom like jumbotron that goes. It's a circle. That's really cool. So they what? bended the LEDs. I watched the design process. This thing is like twenty five feet tall. Wow! <laughs> oh my god! That's yeah. like futuristic. That's intense. Yeah, that's that's a better sick. picture. Like look at that. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Wow. And I think this is what it looks like now. Okay. It's really cool. And the Chargers play there. And the Rams. And the Rams. Yeah. That's both right. I forget about them. Yeah. But, okay. Another mm-hmm. thing that I'm very curious about, because you mentioned it before this, and I, I love documentaries. Yes. What What is this? Tell us about this. So, do you want the short story or the long story? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, give us, how about, <laughs> give us the, give us the synopsis, and then we'll watch the trailer. And then you can explain So, it, it is about a spiritual group. That later turns into a cult. Mm, that never happens. So, uh, th- I'll, I'll give you the b- big three. Largest immigration fraud in United States history. Okay. Largest mass poisoning case in U.S. history. Largest wiretapping scandal in U.S. history. <laughs> okay, this sounds very interesting. Yep. All right, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah. let's give it a look see. <laughs> Everybody felt they were there at the beginning of the great experiment. Like we were the chosen people. <laughs> I'm here in one of the largest ranches in the Northwest. Today, it's Rajneesh Purim because a prominent Indian guru and his followers bought it. Our vision was to create a community based on compassion and sharing. Look, 
one's agenda was simply to raise the consciousness of humanity. That was his goal. America was land of promise. It was my conviction we will have no problems. I don't think America has a place for these people. Everyone in Antelope mistrust Rajneesh. I want that guru and his evil influence out of my city. They're run by satanic power. There is talk of vigilantes who may seek revenge on the Rajneeshis. A bomb went off in the middle of the community. More than 60 followers evacuated. It was a catastrophe. Mostly unjust, terrified. If I didn't take measures to protect our community, no one else would do it. We call upon the governor to disarm this cult's army now. If the government does decide to get you, they're going to get you. Who would poison a whole town? The Rajneeshi set a stage for a big outbreak to influence the election. They had no evidence. They were facing immigration fraud, smuggling. The Rajneeshis came this close to murdering a presidential appointee. There is bias, there is prejudgment, religious discrimination. And this is democracy. I've had enough of it. We were going to mount a full-scale assault. We will be ready to protect ourselves. Grown up understanding, thou shalt not kill. What had happened? There's darkness in all of us. Doesn't make you a bad person. <laughs> Creepy ass laugh. I'm definitely watching that. That looks very good. Um, it is. Dude, I've got chills right now. Yeah, Probably that's crazy. I was not, my, I was talking to the friend who introduced me to this uh, uh, miniseries, and we both agreed it was probably the best documentary we've ever watched. Yeah, definitely watched it ever. Oh Besides Ethan's wonderful documentary uh, right. about his boxing, <laughs> I remember that it was my first one. Um, it was okay. more to come. More to come. <laughs> right. It was a practice run. We'll say that. Nice, but. Yeah, okay, so another thing I wanted to ask you, um, so obviously you're into... Wait, you do, you want th- do you want him to like s- explain it more? Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or do... I can I can go into it a little bit. Okay. Um, religious organization in India, led by this man named the Bhagwan, who was like their spiritual leader. And he had a secretary, her name was Sheila. Um, Very uh, religious name. Yep, Bhagwan Sheila. and Sheila. So they were receiving persecution, religious persecution in India. This was the mid-70s. Okay. You know, politically rough time. So they moved over to America. At the time, you could receive a green card if you married an American citizen. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of Americans went over to India to join the spiritual movement, they were able to marry in people who lived in India and Europe. Oh. So they could all come to America together. Right. So that was kind of where the immigration fraud mm-hmm. came in. Um, and then the community that lived around their new group, uh, very conservative, rural Oregon, um, they started getting violent mm. towards them. Yeah, that's not a... G- so the, the, these conservatives in Oregon started, like, they, they bombed one of the Rajneeshi's hotels. So what? Sheila, who was kind of leading the organization, um, leading it politically and the Rajneesh is leading it spiritually. Um, she bought all of the vacant towns or all the vacant uh, houses and buildings and started moving Rajneeshis into the town to start influencing their local elections. Oh my God. So they could take over this town from the inside out. <laughs> and then they started getting bigger and bigger because more people were starting to like threaten their community. Yeah. So they got more and more defensive mm-hmm. until one day they took it too far. And they started killing people and poisoning people and attempting to assassinate people. So the the cult followers did or the, the townsfolk did? Uh, the cult followers, if you could call it a cult. Mm-hmm. The religious group. The religious group was the one who started doing these assassinations and these poisonings. They took it too far. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I would draw the line at yeah, death. Yeah, yeah. So I would say it's, so. It's, 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 yeah. it's a weird, like, and you have to understand the woman Sheila who was leading this. She was in her early twenties. 
I mean, she was only she was only a year or two older than we are, and she had joined the spiritual movement when she was, I want to say, younger than sixteen. So this has been her entire life, and she doesn't she doesn't know anything different. Mm. And she's still alive. Uh, She is living. She's living in Switzerland now. Oh, Um, actually, actually, she like does like a lot of good work for her community, and she like takes care of dementia patients and stuff like that. So has she like? fallen off of this religious path or that's just kind of the stigma she gets yeah, because she was so part of she it. was never she never really liked the spiritual side of it uh-huh she liked doing a lot more of the organizational stuff right so she was the one who basically built the community in oregon from the ground up yeah gotcha. um, she was so, more focused on that aspect of it right so i i i don't think she's really a sannyasin anymore which gotcha. was their kind of that was their name of their okay Religious belief. Interesting. Spiritual belief. I'm yeah. Def- I'm definitely watching. So, Please yeah, do. I definitely can watch Wild Wild Country on Wild Netflix. Wild Wild Country. Beautiful. No free shout outs. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. So, segueing into another thing, um, you know, obviously you're very involved in these, you know, political things. Um, is that, are you looking to be in the political scene as a career after college? Yeah, I think... Politics has always interested me, and that's why I wanted to go into journalism initially. I'm no longer a journalism major, um, but I always th- bless you. Alex. I always thought that. Thank you. <laughs> I know, so inappropriate. I apologize. <laughs> I've always thought that political reporting was interesting, uh, and then I got here, and realized you know journalism isn't my thing, but I'm still really interested in politics and, mm-hmm. and law. Um, so I think I think being a judge would be an extremely rewarding experience. Um, mm. You know, I am obviously involved in some political groups now, you know, through whole government or whatever that may be. Um, writing laws, passing laws, not really interesting to me. Yeah. But studying the Constitution, you know, running litigation, stuff like that, mm. that's really interesting. Yeah, I could definitely see that. So I, th- I think that being like a circuit judge would be amazing. And what is that? What does that process look like? like? Like after college, that timeline to get there. So, from what I've researched and what's viable to me, there are two paths. One path, uh, both paths end up in law school, obviously. Uh, through one path, I become a prosecutor. Okay. I don't want to do that because I uh, have a difficult time justifying a lot of things prosecutors do. Yeah. Mm. For obviously political reasons, so Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. The other side of it is going into constitutional law, Mm -hmm. which is a lot more academic. Okay. So I I think kind of going through the academic route, really doing a lot of heavy research and study into the Constitution and the founding documents of our nation and applying the Constitution and then eventually translating all of that knowledge over to a political career like being a judge. Okay, so that's like kind of one of the the prerequisites in that direction. Right, that's think? that's kind of that's kind of the, a major path that people take to judgehood. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, being a judge is you know, not really something that you get promoted into. Right. Yeah. That's like a very that's a unique position to very, be in. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if I could ever do that. That's a lot of weight. I would feel like. Yeah. On myself, just that's crazy having that kind of <laughs> decision making to do. Man. That's really cool, man. That's that's really awesome. Thank and you. I know coming from a journalism perspective <laughs> of it, I mean, coming from that and switching, like, okay, I understand the purpose of it, but I would rather do this, and I think yeah. I can make more of a difference doing this. And yeah. I, I really respect, like, that. that's really cool. I know it's really hard for people, like, to come into college and change their major. Yeah. Not necessarily completely different directions, but, like, it's pretty different than journalism and politics. Right. Because you're a Absolutely. poli-sci major. I'm poli-sci in English now. Gotcha. Um, so I, I, I moved completely out of, you know, college journalism, which has been a process and a half. Yeah. But I'm really happy I'm doing it. I feel like I'm a lot more interested, and mm. I feel like my heart is in the right place. That's where you so. want to be, for sure. That's yeah. funny, though, because I'm like, you know, he's like, I want to be a judge and, like, you know, decide people's fate and things <laughs> like that. I'm like, I, w- I just make videos. It's kind of, it's funny just seeing, like, sometimes how people take career paths that just seem a lot more important i think think like (laughs) if if judge doesn't work out and like another dream job would be to uh make documentaries 
I think that would be really, really cool to do. I think do. we could team up. Ethan Walden, awesome. Michael Hodge, Dr. Right. Henry. <laughs> Dude, Boom. I feel like you would handle the, the, the like logistic and story yeah. side of it and the structural aspects of it because I'm terrible at that and you seem very fine-tuned mm-hmm. in that. And then I would just handle the video side that of it. Actually, I've been looking for someone to do that. Dude. That's all I'd need. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Random question. Yeah. What's the weirdest documentary you would make? Oh, you know what? I have a great... Thing I there's a documentary you guys both need to watch because yeah. it's amazing. It's by um, David Furia. He's from New Zealand, and it's a um, a documentary called Tickled, about a un- an underground tic- tickling <laughs> ring <laughs> that y- it like basically. He finds this thing on no. Facebook. The journalist David Ferrier no. finds this. No, trust me, trust me. There's, he finds this basically like this underground tickling ring on Facebook and he like sees videos of these grown men like tickling each tickling other each and they other. they look like you oh know like God. middle-aged dudes like dudes in their 20s and it's just videos of them like tickling each other and he's like what like there's like strapped down like you know on a bed just like tickling nothing else fully clothed and they're just tickling each other and they're like laughing and stuff like that and he's like what is this so he checks to see who posted it it's from this one like you know, nobody like production company basically under this one lady's name and he's a journalist. So he goes to contact them because he wants to do a story and then they respond to him. Basically he's a, he's a gay man, a gay uh, journalist. And he basically, they almost me. (laughs) They respond to him saying a bunch of stuff. Like we don't want to do this story with you. You F word. Like, you know, no way. Like we, you know, we don't want anything to do with you. You think they'd be all about it, right? Because they're ticklers, and that's what piques his curiosity. Is like, what is going on here? And it, it just, you know, how documentaries just, just explode. Snowballs. It just oh snowballs. And that's just exactly snowballs. what happens, wow. and it's amazing. It's one of my favorite documentaries. Fascinating. Tickling. Fascinating. Tickled. And it's just like it just gets crazier and crazier. <laughs> you know, like it, it supersedes anything that it starts. Right. In. It always does. Yeah. So that's that's a really great one. And he's wow. he's got a really good documentary series on Netflix called um ah, Dark Tourist. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that? Mm-mm. I've heard of that. Yeah, it's really good too. He goes to places that are popular for tourism that are bad. You showed me this. Yes. Oh. You did. So yes. He goes to like Chernobyl, he goes to um Excuse me, person knocking on the door. Let me go. We are doing a podcast. I bet it's Jarrett. Wow. Asshole. <laughs> it's Jarrett. Jarrett, you want a cameo? I mean, it's already yeah, too late. No, it's not on. You got to go over there. Just say hi to one of those. Oh, yeah, gosh. Hold on. Yeah. He's. Oh, this geez. is a hijacking. It really is. This is my time. Yeah. Speaking of, this is uh, Michael's. Well, you won't, hey, also, you won't give me a second podcast and you know oh, dang well. We told you. We told you what you need to do to do it. What? We told you. Get the, Once you get your internship. Then oh, we can talk about that. We got you, bro. bro but that's not until the summer. Exactly. exactly. But Sorry, everyone, man. We need to cycle through the people that haven't oh. had a turn yet. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out for one second. Right? Uh-huh. We, we did a, co- or a podcast with my roommate. Fun and games, right? I am a very interesting person. We already did one with you. you we already did one. You did one with me and my roommate. We talked about our podcast, but this time we can talk about my life. That would get you a lot of views. That would get you <laughs> a lot of trouble. <laughs> yes, yes, you're very right. I'm just telling you guys. That Jared, was- look at your facial hair right now. Bro, I have a goatee. You guys like it? Well, just move, comment down below. Right, yeah, 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 right, right. Comment down below if you guys like my goatee. Yeah, you Disgusting. can, and it's going to be no. I told him that I wouldn't let him near my kids if I had kids. <laughs> I wouldn't either. I'd be like, no, kid, hey, don't. <laughs> I Michael, <laughs> opinions, go. Michael said he didn't mind it today. I drove so, him home from 132. I think, here's the thing. My dad has a goatee, and Jared has a goatee, and both my dad and Jared are from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> so he just reminds me of the my dad. The comparison is uncanny. <laughs> yeah, that's, there's too many things similar. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, I apologize for uh, busting in on bro. your podcast. All good, bro. Maybe next time, hey, just shoot me a text. I haven't seen you today, so I was going to stop true, by. True, true, true. Shoot me a text next time. Be like, good recording. Gotcha, you know? <laughs> but We know he likes to drop in. Hey, I finished that essay last night. Good. That's surprising. You guys need to tell Jared to get some more sleep. Go. Now. Uh, I have sleep. a presentation night with my friends, but other than that. I'm just kidding. It's like 9 o'clock. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't go to bed before 4 anyway. But Is it really? Yeah, it's only 9. I know. Oh. Not whack. Like, what? 
It doesn't feel that late. I just okay. Yeah, cool. All right, we're gonna finish up. I'm gonna turn this <laughs> microphone away. Yeah, I just turned it away to talk, but. Um, Close the door. Real quick. Okay, I don't know. Thank you. We can cut this out if you feel uncomfortable, but this is something that I feel like is unique to you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm going to say? I think so. I don't. The Tourette's. So. Now I do. I, yeah, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I get a lot of questions about that, and I'm fine with it. Because I feel like that's something. I can actually add on this. My sister recently got diagnosed with Tourette's. Really? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. We don't know what it is. Okay. Um, I went to a neurologist when I was oh a wee young lad, sixth or seventh grade. So that's when it kind of so, started. So that's kind of when the parent, my parents, were like, "Hey, what's this?" Right. Took a took me to a neurologist. He said neurologically he's fine. Yeah. So hmm. a few years later, fifteen or sixteen, I started going to therapy for anxiety. Okay. I thought it was a product of anxiety. Yeah. It's not. Oh, so it's just it's a it's a motor tick disorder. It hasn't been diagnosed as Tourette's because we can't make that diagnosis, right? Because there's yeah, it is it is simply a motor tick disorder that we cannot find the apparent cause of. Interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't mean to be so abrupt with bringing that up, no. but I just that's something that I've I've never met anyone who has something like that, and I know that it's something that people notice, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it's something that you're kind of like. Uh, I gotta, you know, <laughs> this conversation again. again, right? Yeah. So I figured that could be something, kind of maybe if someone has ever or they will come in contact with someone they know things, you know, they have a better understanding of it. So it just yeah makes more sense, or it's just something mm -hmm. to talk about. It's really been difficult during COVID actually because you can tell it comes from my nose too. Yeah. Everybody thinks I'm sick. I was wondering that. I we had a class together and oh, there were yeah. people like looking at you and stuff, and yep. I'm like, I know that that's not what it is, but I could see why they might interpret it like that. And it's just kind of like... Yeah, no, it's it's just a tick disorder. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. So, like, my sister recently got diagnosed with uh, Tourette's, and she it's she can't control it. And when she does, I know she feels really bad about it. And yeah. I love her to death, but sometimes it's just so funny. <laughs> oh, sometimes really? Sometimes it's really funny. What and she, of, she goes uh, along with it, too. It's just... What kind of tics does she have? Uh, verbal. Yep. Verbal. And, uh, like, head movement... Stuff like that. Really? I mean, I know sometimes, I think one time she actually punched a wall so hard she almost, uh, she sprained her wrist. Wow. What? Yeah. It, it got really bad. She finally went to the neurologist and she's doing a little bit better. She's on her meds. and That's good. It's really, it's very interesting it's like, to yeah. see how differently it affects people. And that's mm -hmm. why I wasn't sure if that's what it was. Because I know some people have very different variations of it, mm -hmm. which is, I think, what makes it so unique is that it's literally different for every person. Like, I, I think I know someone who has it in just their eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Which is like, okay. I know a guy that has it in his nostrils and his eyelids. So he'll like flare his nose and open his eyes. Oh, really? yeah. Yep. It was like okay. my sixth grade football coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like every, every time he's looking at you, he thought he was like really intense. <laughs> really? Like looking at you all the time. Yeah. He's like, oh, this man is scary. <laughs> yeah. So have there been, I mean, has that been challenging at times? Like, Oh, absolutely. Like, because that developed early in age. So, yeah. you know, I'm sure kids are pretty mean. Oh, I was, was bullied. A, like even throughout, even now. Really? I know people who like just can't help but make a joke. Yeah. I'm like, just stop. Yeah. Like it's, it gets really old after I'm like sure. the second Oh, I would imagine yes. it's infuriating. You're just like, shut up. Can like, I punch you in the face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's so like, because uh, I mean, have you ever had any really um, like unique run-ins with anyone who was like, wait, because you know, some people just don't have a filter. So they just like, blah. And they just like, have they, has anyone ever said anything to you? You know, that's actually, I surprisingly no. And I've okay. worked in customer service for many years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, people I, are very mean in customer service. You know, yeah. actually, there. Uh, I mean, I have had people in my life that like, my old boss used to call it the Michael Shake, which like, I thought is kind of rude, but also really fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. That's okay, you know? Do you ever, like, do you ever poke fun of yourself about it? Just to be, you know, just like, whatever. Yeah, I do with my best friend because I know that like... Yeah, you can be, you're safe with her. You can right. be vulnerable. That's She's good. Great. Yeah. Man, well... I mean, is there anything else that comes to mind that we want to... Oh, you never answered my question. What question? If you can make any documentary about anything, <gasps> yes, would you make? Like, the yeah. most random, I bet. like, random one. Like, Michael, I'm trying to, you know, get into your brain if you know what I'm saying. So, there, here's the thing. I know a lot of things about a lot of different things. Oh, But I know. not enough to make a documentary on it. Yes, so. I know you uh. could. You could do it on soap. 
Oh, segue into our next topic. grandpa led the team that invented foam soap. Foam soap, Like, what? That is insane. That's a modern invention that literally has carried our society in in terms of sanitization on the daily basis. So you guys know, they call them solid state air fresheners. And they're basically the one that you put on the wall or sometimes they're like ones now. And they like every 15 minutes. Yeah, it's the one that scares the living crap out of you in the bathroom at three in the morning. You're like... Yep, my grandpa also was on the team that invented those. And he didn't get no royalties, did because he? Because he worked for Ecolab, God, which is Ecolab. great. Obviously, I wonder how many he heart resources. attacks he's induced. Yeah. <laughs> in the bathroom at three in the morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, that's actually, yeah, probably true. Foam soap. Yeah, I think I could. I can do a, I have, you know, I can interview my grandpa. That's crazy. For real. Yeah. I bet he could tell you a lot of the behind the scenes. He's like, man, this was on the forefront. We were breaking boundaries. Yeah. Everyone was like, are they going to do it? Yeah, we're you know, it's all it's all soap actually it's actually soap. in the pumping machine. It's not in the soap itself. Wait, what? It's, yeah, it's I would, not, that's what I assume because I mean it's just liquid soap. It's liquid soap. It's all in the machine. The 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 oh that it like foams it. Yeah, that makes it foam. So it's just the conversion process. It's not the chemical. But he, my state grandpa was also it. a chemist, so he also did a lot of like actual soap making too. I remember he always said he like went on business trips when I was young. Like yeah. he went like D.C. and Mexico and China and Brazil. Yeah. And I only learned later, like, I thought they were so cool at the time. He was testing soap. He was, like, he was like in so the think, field. Like, yeah, I'm going on a, a chemist uh, business trip, son. You're thinking he's, like, going, like, down to, like, Bolivia, going to do some, like, meth cocaine and be, like, yeah, I'm a chemist. Yeah. Soap. Yeah, no, he was, like, like literally, he was soap. literally, like, in a laundry room somewhere <laughs> testing soap in Mexico. Oh, my. He had to go to Mexico to do That's that. That's yeah. great. Well, why did he have to go there to, to do that? Mexico? I have no idea. Yeah, like, the soap is that. cheaper there. Yeah. Right. You could have <laughs> just done that about. anywhere else. Right. That's funny. Oh yeah. And so is that, was there anything else interesting about him? I forget. Well, he's kind of a dick, but. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> soap. Also not a very, he's a Richard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a Richard. Soap just brings the worst out of people, man. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's right. That's crazy. You yeah. got any other, like, crazy stories? Because I know there's a. Uh, yeah. Anything that comes <laughs> to mind? Like, you're like, oh, this is what I tell people. Wow. Well, I can name every single country in the world on a blank map. What? Um, wow. How, how many are there? Do you know? Uh, right now, I think the United Nations recognizes around 143, but there are <laughs> around 160 or 170 <laughs> actual other nations in the world. Yeah. You're saying, like, mm, they're lying. <laughs> the UN's lying to us all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, it's actually? It's a rogue organization. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. We talk about in poli a lot the different divisions of government. And, uh, you know, the United Nations, the reason so powerless as a global government is because it's a confederation. You know, America has experienced two confederations in its existence. The first time with our first constitution, the Articles of Confederation, and then, mm. of course, the Confederacy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, both times, they have obviously failed miserably. Yeah. So why we would set up the United Nations, obviously America did not set up the United Nations itself, but we can look at confederations across the world and see that fundamentally they're weak. Mm-hmm. So why would we want to set up, maybe, maybe that's the reason they set up a global government to be weak. Gotcha. I don't Ooh, know. I did have. I did want to ask you something because I know you probably know way more about this. What is your stance, or like, what is your like, what's going on in Myanmar right now? Like, what is going on in Myanmar? It's like a it's a military coup. Oh, that they're, they're killing a bunch of civilians and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like, I I just I would I feel like you've got, you're a little bit more knowledge on that, that and I would so love the scoop. Um, it's really interesting. I dude, you could have a scoop podcast. Here's the scoop. It's me, Michael. I got the scoop. Yeah, that's exactly how he talks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, hey, it's hey, Michael. Oh. I Michael got the, the scoop. scoop. I will tell you what's going on in the world. So, <laughs> I'm not going to try the accent. Uh, Leave the gun. <laughs> Bring the cannoli. Yeah. Yeah, no, close. Myanmar is all kinds of messed up right now. Um, and for, I, Myanmar, I'm a little less, uh, I guess, kind of caught up in Myanmar politics. I know a lot about Brazil, not so much Myanmar. Oh. Um, there's some it's it's really you know I, the the military ran Myanmar for many decades, only just started transitioning into democracy. Mm. And President Key, I think she's president, president or prime minister. Uh, yeah, I think Key, she was the president. Um, you know, one of the first democratically elected uh, leaders. leaders of Myanmar. You know, obviously, it's a it's a great step forward for democracy. Um, but then she herself had her own issues with 
you know, corruption and letting the military stay in power. P- part of the, their constitution is that the military must make up a, a bare minimum, which I think is around like 25% of their government, of their legislature. Oh, so interesting. any new thing that they need to change constitutionally must be approved oh by no. the military. Oh, no. That's like, and I'm sure they don't only occupy that 25% of that influence, right. would you say? So the, the issue anymore. obviously no. comes when you give military political power because then they can usurp power whenever they feel like it. Right. Like, what are you going to do about it? We'll shoot you if you don't and, listen. And you know, actually, interestingly enough, there are some systems that where that works out fairly well in Turkey. Um, oh, really? They, they mm. actually, uh, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure from memory, um, in their constitution, they have it written uh, certain constitutional means to have a military coup. If, oh, if they like, feel as if, if, if they if feel as if be. the government isn't doing their job. So it's like checks and balances, but with, but like, with the military? M- the military. Wow. wow. Interesting. That's yeah. a scary thing to state. Like, hey, if you guys... Uh, hey, don't mess this up. <laughs> if you guys don't do this, like... Eh. Yeah, in 2016, the military attempted a coup. Um, but a lot of people think that it was actually the president who staged the coup in order to purge political opponents. I remember He's hearing he, about he this. He has usurped a lot of power in Turkey now. Oh, so he was like, oh, okay. He ran for the mayor of Istanbul in 2004, and he was really worried. I think this might have been his re-election campaign gotcha. as mayor of Istanbul. Huh. And there was an incident, a power outage incident, in made, or maybe it was Ankara, the capital. It was Istanbul or Ankara. And power outage in really big... Um, voting districts. The official word from the er- Erdogan, his name, the Erdogan government, was that a cat had ra- run into a power <laughs> transformer. Wait, <laughs> a cat had run into a power transformer, and that's why all these major voting booths had lost power and did not allow people to vote. It's like they're not even trying to like pretend. They're like, yeah, you know, it's like a it's like a teenager making up an excuse for why their homework isn't in. My dog ate My it. My dog ate it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is exactly the first thing I thought of. <laughs> What everybody? This is editing Alex, and I just want to let you guys know that we did get copyrighted. Um, I'll give you some context. We basically watched the scene from Christmas Vacation where the cat ate the light bulb and then got fried underneath the chair, and then we related that to the power outage in Istanbul because you know, the cat got in and so on and so forth. You watch the video, so you understand. This is just a heads up. Enjoy the rest of the video. Do you guys know, have you guys ever watched Law & Order SVU? No. Yes, I've watched a few. So Mar- dun, dun. Mariska Haggerty is the the uh, actress who plays uh, Olivia yes. Benson, and you know in the opening scene of National Lampoon Christmas Vacation when they uh, drive under the truck, the truck. Uh huh. So oh. that actually happened to Mariska Haggerty's mom, like in real life. In real life, so it wasn't quite like they weren't going over, but she went underneath this way and she died and she was like a f- famous actress at the time like a hollywood darling oh and no so I, it was like <gasps> i forget like you know in trucks now though they have bars underneath to prevent people from Is doing that what that. that's for and i don't remember the name they call it. i don't remember her mom's name but they call it like her mom's bar because like it happened to her and oh, it was like a really big oh, thing that's like the, that's why it's the name of that yeah i was gonna say because like i don't remember watching that movie like the literal gap between the logs and the truck is an absurd <laughs> amount of space like aerodynamically <laughs> that should not even be possible right right, right. like who would build this to where a car <laughs> can right go right underneath a tractor trailer yes <laughs> whose idea was that i what? believe that's i've I'm actually, yeah, I think that's I'll, uh, I'll I'll look that up because my mom mm. works for a tractor trailer dealer, mm. uh, dealership. Wow! Yeah. So they like they fix them up, and she's like the bookkeeper and all that. I'll have to ask her about that. It's mm-hmm. yes. really interesting. Yes, I didn't know that. So, Michael, yeah. we talked about this earlier. We told him to wait. You need to give Ethan five different accents. Okay, and I want you to rate it ten out of ten. Give him the phrase and everything. <clears throat> In Italian, I want you to say "Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball, Mario." <laughs> Mamma mia. Wait. <laughs> what was the, I don't usually do Italian, but... I, oh, I got him. Okay, hold on. Wait, Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball? Mario. Come Mario. on. You Mario. have to say Mario. That's Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball, Mario. 
I feel like that's like Borat. Yes, so I was way too it, was, here's the, it wasn't bad. It was just awkwardly nasally. Yes, it was. Um, I want you in. I mean, you could do like a kind of a stereotypical like Mamma Mia. <laughs> that's a spicy <laughs> meatball of Mario. I was trying to do like a like a real one. I know, not I like think. not like a cartoon Italian accent. I, yeah. I want you to say Siberian accent. Really? What is a Siberian very, like, accent? Very Russian, very Russian. thick okay. Russian Siberian like, accent. Like the th- thicker than the one you were doing earlier right. today. Okay. I will send you to the gulag, my friend. I will send you to the gulag, my friend. Not bad. Not bad. I'll say it in Dos Russian. Virginia. I want you to say... Say that again. What? Say that again. I think I'm pretty sure it's gibberish, right? Or is oh, that actually saying so half of that is real? Half. Only half. <laughs> yeah, I combine stuff just to make it sound <laughs> more real. Yeah. So I did a, uh, a play She's my not senior tell year us. high school. Yeah. Um, it's called "Don't Drink the Water." It was written by Woody Allen, and it was about American tourists who were caught in uh, communist Eastern Russia in an uh, American embassy. It was a comedy. I played the lead character. Very fun. We did a New Jersey accent, which is similar to a New York accent. Yeah. That's when, like, they don't have really much of the Oz. That's so Boston. I want Joy-Z. you to say, I am the government, which was my senior quote, actually. I am the government. I am oh, the government nice. in a New Jersey slash New York accent. Okay. Um, the warm up. Yeah. Mm. Me, me, me. I don't do this one a lot, but. In a New Jersey, so I'm trying to. Joy Z, you know, I'm trying to embody um, Matt Damon from Goodwill Hunting right now. Mm. Well, they're from Boston. Boston. Uh, uh, what so about Boston? A, I'll accept Boston, but not happily. Okay. <laughs> not. <laughs> this happily. is a lot of pressure. To, I I usually oh do gosh. like Australian, British, like. So I got Russian. I caught him. Really I caught him. Like Scottish. Oh, Scottish as well. That is my favorite one. I like that one. <laughs> You don't want me to do like a Scottish one or something like that. No, I want you to do New Jersey. Like, I am the government. I am the government. I don't know. What do you uh, want me to d- talk? Uh, like? I am the government. I am the government. Close that enough. was yeah. That was really um. How funny? How, how do do Joe Pesci voice? Joe Pesci. No, no funny how like. And now say I'm the government. I'm the government. Like <laughs> funny like a clown. Like I amuse you. <laughs> I'm I'm the government. Like I'm, no, I'm the Democratic like, Party. Oh, well, you think you're funny? <laughs> Holy fuck. Um, what else? I can do, no, like, proper British or something like that. So I could do, you know, um, oh, but oh. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just, right, we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or there's, like, like, Cockney or things like that, where you talk, like, you know, them, like, inner city type things in, like, London or something like that. No, you're like, oh, you're you're a, you're a British rapper, right? Like King of <laughs> go, 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 go. right? Me and them boys gonna mess you up, things way nasty, but anybody got a ciggy? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or there's um, or oh, listen, bro, I'm gonna go to this store and get some Pepsi real quick for I more. Hate that. No, from no. Maccas. So <laughs> Maccas, bro. No, listen, my 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 bro Max. No, he's a He's a dime piece, bro. No, he's got <laughs> he's got the nicest pics you've ever fucking seen. No, swear to God. You're not liking that one? No? No, oh, I'm really into it. Frick. I like it. Or there's a, a New Zealand one is more upwards inflection. It is. It. It's more like this. You know, they talk like this. I don't so know. So they go up on the, yeah, the, like the enunciation at yeah. the end of a word or something. It's different. They're called Kiwis. I don't know. <laughs> it's here they talk. Pull up a video of a New Zealander. No, I believe you. No, Jacinda they Ardern, they Prime yeah. Minister. That's good woman. Crazy. Is that? That was really good. Okay, Thank now you. okay, we got to think of the most random like BS phrase to give him in Scottish. In Scottish? Yes. Yeah, that is my favorite one. I do like that one. Like the most random thing you can think That's of. That's shite being Scottish. I'm gonna let you do it because of uh, reasons. Wow. The gentleman <sighs> come up with the starting phrase. Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunman. Are you just reading my poster? Henry Golding. Mitchell Dockley, <laughs> Jeremy disgusting. Strong, Eddie Marin, 
Directed by Guy Oh, Ritchie. I know. Colin Farrell is, I believe he's Scottish. Oh, really? Yeah. I love Ewan McGregor. You know what's crazy? What? How quickly Prince Philip is from dying. How? Wait, what? How crazy? Quickly Pri- Prince Philip is from dying. The man is toast. Is that the phrase or just in general? Oh, that should be the phrase. Okay. <laughs> wait, say it one more time. It's quickly. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how, how quickly... quickly Prince, Prince, Philip Char- Prince Philip is dying. is dying. It's crazy how quickly Prince Philip is dying. Ugh, wow. That's insane, dude. You're really good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Rest in peace, Princess Diana. Rest in peace, Princess Diana. No, that one is that's a bit <gasps> too tight. Okay, can we do one super last thing? Yes. Yeah, of course. Dude. There's a video on YouTube. It's a, a Scottish woman who's celebrating the death of Margaret Thatcher. Oh, and it like it is so funny. I th- Scottish woman, Margaret. Is it th- Thatcher? Ma- Thatcher. <laughs> celebrating. Wait, celebrating the death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the second one. Second one. <laughs> okay, I feel like this would be not a bit of good. Not a bit. I put a steak. Threw her heart and garlic around her neck to make sure she never come back. <laughs> That's a pretty horrible thing to say when her funeral's going on right now. Too oh bad. my god! Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. Dude, oh my ruthless. gosh, that's hilarious. She's like, yeah, no, that I'm not taking that back. She's like, I meant that with every fiber of my being. I don't want her to come back. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Do you, do you have you ever seen The Simpsons? You know, uh, yeah. um, Willie, oh. the groundskeeper, <laughs> the groundskeeper. <laughs> Oi, better right than then, I always say. It's like Shrek or something. No, he's Shrek. I don't. Is is Shrek Scottish? No, he, he doesn't sound like that. No, he does. I, I think don't he's, remember. I don't remember. Well, I mean, it's uh, the guy that does Austin Powers. It's oh, uh, oh Mike Myers. Um, Mike Myers yeah. does the voice of Shrek. Yeah. yeah, and Mike Myers is the man of many voices. He Mike really Myers is. is a literal <laughs> genius. Have you seen the clip on TikTok? Uh, the sound on TikTok that's like, "Hey, back off, you spooky batch." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the context is, but there's just a sound where a Scottish guy says that, and I thought it was so funny. <laughs> yeah, back off, you spooky batch. Man. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, something else you can say that's just, like, so bizarre. What's, I can't think of anything. Um, Alex Neal has, has a podcast with Ethan Weldon called the Hemonymous Podcast. The Hemonymous. How, I have a question, Hemonymous. actually, for you guys. How did you come up with that? Where did that come from? Oh All right, so Alex loves mentioning this. <laughs> so, yeah. like, bro, we're like, <laughs> I'm not from California, dude. I'm bro, we're I'm like, a surfer, dude. it's like homonymous means like it's like everything's like the, the same, same bro. but like different. Also, is that how you spell homonymous? It is H O M O N Y M O U S. I didn't know there was a Y in it. Yep. Homonym. Homonymous. So basically, I, it. I can actually tell you the story. So me and my friend, not not the the like the BS version I use now. <laughs> I, like, I, I like the name, so yeah. I, I'm trying to like figure out a way to keep it. Yeah. So basically, the original thing is a homonym is a word that's spelled the same and mean two different things. Oh, yeah. That's and why the you're original <laughs> co-host of the podcast. His name was Alex. So oh. we were both named Alex. So that in that context, it makes sense. But the thing about everyone being we're all the <laughs> same, but we have unique <laughs> stories. It's kind of though. a stretch, but yeah. Oof. That, in that in that context, but I it like makes the name. It's it's yeah, catchy. It so I tried name. to find out a no, way to incorporate definitely. that. No, into different things like mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Definitely. So, I mean, all right. All right. Um, yeah. We're uh, running a little bit later than we usually do. but That's okay. It's I'm all a, worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like this episode. Thank you. So, Michael, we, we appreciate stuff. you coming on. I loved being on. Is there anything yes. you'd like to share with the people, like a uh, social media link, or if you have, like, a uh, cause? It's on. underscore just underscore Hodge on Instagram. <laughs> you oh. will not regret it. Oh, <laughs> that's a bold statement right there, social media wise. But you're going to back it up. Well, um, Michael, is there anything else you'd like to add besides your social media? Um, It has been a pleasure. Uh, It has been a dream since I learned about this podcast (laughs) to be on, and I'm honored to finally be here. So thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. I think you sealed the deal when you told us the soap story. Yeah, we were like, (laughs) we got to talk to you about this. Like, this is insane. It's very important. (laughs) Of course. Ethan? Yeah, I think we're good. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Yes, so from the Homonymous Podcast, I'm Alex Neal. I'm Ethan Weldon. And I'm Michael Hodge. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great day.